a look at the Canon G7X Mark III. Now this is an amazing little camera and can get some very professional results, but sometimes after using a camera out in the real world you can find things which aren't so great. So I've been testing it out, taking the hard work out of it for you, and in this video I'm going to give my full review. Its only real competition is the Sony ZV-1, which I've also reviewed, so you can check the link down below if you do want to take a look at that. So let's go over all the positives first and then we'll get to the downsides, all of the negatives. There's hardly any. <laughs> okay, so the obvious thing you first notice about this camera is just how small it is. When you film on a full frame camera, there can be days when you leave the house without it, just because of how big it is to carry around with you. Now listen, you be a good boy and I won't be long and I promise mummy's gonna be back soon, okay? I'll see you later. And then you end up in a situation that's really worth filming and you have to resort to filming on your phone and settling for that flat looking footage that we're so used to seeing all over Instagram day in, day out. So if you want to keep your footage looking professional but still have a camera that you can easily keep with you at all times, then this could be the perfect option. When I started this video, I was filming on my main camera, which is a full frame Sony a7C. And actually now I've jumped across to the Canon just so that you can see what it looks like. And I think it's really impressive. You will notice a difference, but actually the Sony costs four times as much. And the main thing you'll notice is probably a jump in color because we've moved from Sony to Canon. And lots of people say they prefer the Canon colors anyway. But do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now the G7X3 shoots both 1080 and 4K videos. And unlike other cameras of the same size, like the Sony ZV-1, you don't get a cropped in image when shooting in 4K. And this can be really significant if you shoot in 4K, especially as a vlogger. It has a one inch sensor, meaning that the video quality it captures is going to be far better than any smartphone or action camera, like a GoPro for example, especially in low light situations. So if you're more experienced with cameras, you can control all of the exposure settings manually, or if you just want to be able to literally turn on the camera and start recording without the hassle of changing a single setting, which I have to admit, I'm actually guilty of quite a lot, then you can keep it in auto mode and then you can just let the camera do everything for you, which is great if you need to film in any situation at a moment's notice, especially if you're vlogging, which sometimes does happen. So let's talk about the lens on this thing. It's the equivalent of a 24 to 100 mil on a full frame camera, which is slightly more than the Sony ZV-1. That only comes in at 24 to 70 mil, meaning that you do get a nice wide shot at the 24 mil end, but you can still zoom right in on your subject for a closer look. And the aperture opens all the way up to a very wide 1.8, which means not only can you capture high quality footage in low light conditions, but you can also get that nice cinematic blurry background that makes filmmakers weak at the knees. And in comparison, a lens with the same spec for my full frame camera would cost over two grand and that's just for the lens. So this little thing is quite impressive. Along with the great lens, you also get a built-in ND filter, which is really rare for a compact camera. So an ND filter, if you don't know, is basically like a pair of sunglasses for your lens. So what that means is even on a really bright sunny day outside, the ND filter can be turned on and you can still capture a shot in the way that you want to without the bright areas being overexposed. With my full frame camera, if I want to use an ND filter, I have to physically screw it into the end of the lens. So having this feature built in is just so, so convenient. Another great feature is that you can record time-lapse videos internally. With other cameras, if you want to create a time-lapse, you have to export hundreds of photos from the camera and then use specialized software to stitch them together. But with this Canon, it does all of the work for you and you're left with just one file and that's the finished time-lapse, simple. So next up, let's take a look at the microphone. So what you're listening to now is the audio that's coming straight from the camera and I'm actually really pleased with it. A great feature and one that the Sony ZV-1 actually lacks is that you can set the mic level to auto and that will control the volume for you so you don't have to worry about it peaking or ever sounding too quiet. Now, if you've ever tried to use a built-in mic outside, you will know that the slightest bit of wind can literally ruin your audio. So what I would recommend is just a mini wind muff and you put that on the mic and it does a really good job of just preventing the noise of the wind coming in. But talking of audio, this brings me to my next point, which is where we start looking at the negatives of this camera. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> 
<laughs> Personally, when I'm using a camera to vlog, I really like to use the built-in mic because it's just more convenient and it means I can just keep the camera in my jacket pocket or in my handbag and then it's ready to film within seconds. But some of you guys might want to upgrade the audio quality and use an external mic like the popular Rode Video Micro. Well, that's fine because the G7X has an external mic input. But confusingly, it doesn't actually have anywhere on the top of the camera to mount a microphone. So if you want to use an external mic, you'll need to get some type of bracket to just attach to the camera. So the next downside worth mentioning is for anyone wanting to film in 4K. The camera allows filming in 4K and the quality it gives is honestly amazing. But when you're in 4K, it has a recording limit of 10 minutes. And this is to stop it from overheating. But there have actually been some reports of some people finding that it overheats and stops recording even before it hits that 10 minute limit. So if filming in 4K is your thing, maybe you'll want to consider stepping up to a larger camera that can handle it better. Next up is the autofocus. Now, some people say that it occasionally has issues with keeping focus and they experience what's known as focus hunting, where the camera briefly loses focus and has to refocus itself on the subject. In general, it's not been too bad for me, but I've definitely noticed it happening a bit, especially when it's trying to track my face when I'm filming handheld. For vlog style videos, this can actually add a bit of rawness to your content, but for some people, staying in constant sharp focus at all times is a must, which I totally get. And hopefully this is something they'll address when it has a firmware update. Mr. Cannon, we'd like a firmware update on the autofocus. Have you got any comments? And finally, something which is both a pro and a con, and that's the stabilization. There's no doubt that Canon stabilization systems are way better than their main rival, AKA Sony, but there's still room for improvement in certain areas. So this is the low setting, and as you can see, the stabilization is pretty rubbish. To be honest, I can't ever imagine that you or I would use this. It's also a bit windy. <laughs> So now I've moved on to the highest setting and I mentioned that there's pros and cons. The pro is that the stabilization is amazing. The con is that you've probably noticed it's cropped right in. So it's okay for some situations, not necessarily good for vlogging if you want that kind of wider, looking all around you sort of set up. Still windy guys, it's still windy. <laughs> so now I've moved it onto the standard setting, which for me is just the perfect blend. <laughs> Loving the wind. <laughs> You've got the stabilisation, but you've also got that wider uh, angle. It's not cropped it right in. And actually, I think you get a bit more of a natural feel than on that high setting. Um, I've now walked up and down this road three or four times, starting to look like a bit of a strange person. So I'm going to head back indoors. Also, there's no wind in there. <laughs> so that's the Canon G7X Mark III. It is a great all-round compact camera. I've got very few complaints about it. I won't be sending it back. I've already used it a fair bit, to be honest, and I know I'll continue to use it. So you're staying with me. The only thing that's kind of closest to it in terms of competition, very similar, is the Sony ZV-1, if it comes down to personal preference, in all honesty. But I have done a full review of this and I'll pop a link in the description below if you want to watch that too. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.